Greetings one and all, Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatics. Time for the feedback loop. We've got um, a really, a wall, I'm not even gonna call it, call it a, a medley. It's a wall of work today. Um, Abby has submitted like four different things. Uh, Maddie's got a couple of things in here. Eddie's got a barrage of things to look at. So um, I'm really just excited to jump in and let's go ahead and sh share the screen and get this underway. All right, so right away, um, I've got I've got Abby here off the off the start. She turned into her work first, and I'm actually meeting with her a little later today. And it's kind of interesting because uh, Matt uh, Abby has turned in um, a number of things. She's got her um, competitor analysis and her user interviews um, and her competitor testing all here at once. And one thing that I like to do for all of these. Um, she's got her user interview notes here, which is, which are great. She's also got her competitive competitor testing notes here as well, which again is great. Um, a lot of times, you know, when we get into these little, little bitsy um, observations and I'm, maybe I'm hoping that you were utilizing like a, an Otter AI to record as you went. So you weren't just manually hand typing all this back in um what i like that what i like to see is i like to see some dis distilled like <clears throat> summary at the top of each of these tests uh same thing for the interviews like what was the what's the feel here um you know uh, what do you feel about the information that you've received what's your what's your confidence level that it was a it was a good session you feel like they were they were open they were fluid um um the highlights of the observations because there's a lot of stuff here what was the thing that seemed to really resonate um that level of that summary level here is is missing from them and that doesn't mean that these are bad notes at all you can always go back and add the summary um but it it it, it adds color this is like um this is a lot like reading play by play um, from like a, a sporting event or reading the recipe on the box, but it's that I, I'm not quite sure how to feel about it until I have the summary that goes along with it. Um, so, you know, as I, I mean, I can look through here and like, okay, purple carrot familiar with the website. She, this is talking about Molly here. She found it through an Instagram ad. That's always an interesting observation because it tells you kind of, okay, so was this like word of mouth? How did they get to this thing called purple carrot? Because frankly, I've never heard of it. Um, and that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It's just that I've never heard of it. Um, small confusion with reactivating the account. Um, hates the repetitive similar meal options. Okay, that's another good good observation. Uh, was unable to complete most tasks without being without being an activated user. Um, although though she was logged in, so it's like. You know, you keep if you're not an active user, you're basically held at, at bay on the site. Page seems to have the right amount of content. Um, page seems to have the right amount of content at once to get to the next task. Not tons of community, so it's just like it's balanced. Um, instances have um, confusing design, so it sounds like the meal card buttons were probably an issue. Like a, if she clicked it and it did something that she wasn't anticipating it doing good microcopy saying to add more when needed so there were little you know the little signposts along the way we talked about those um good pop-up menus for the next step so again that's much much along the same lines um i skipped something there annoyed you have to pick food items so far in advance otherwise you can't get it at that week or they'll just send a recommended meal so that's interesting. So she, she she's um, unhappy with the frequency that you can make an adjustment. That sounds like everything's like two, three, four weeks in advance. Um, loves pre-cut veggies. Good pop-up menus for the next step. Design simple, same spot so the user always knows where to go to next. So it sounds like their UI sounds like their UI is good. Um, options to edit meals. Meal choices and subscription plans doesn't care about the try these recipes. Um, 
thinks text stretches across the whole grid as one column is ugly. That is true. Don't do that. Um, and basically what she's saying is, you know, right now this, this text is, is stretching literally across the page. But I've seen websites where, where the text like goes side to side like that. And that's no good. That's that's a really terrible, terrible reading uh, reading experience. Um, that, that's one reason why books, you know, books are um, books are tall, taller than wide. Websites are wide, so you should, you know, if if you're if you're the web width is like this and you're going across it with text, that's that's always that's always going to be bad. Um, oh, by the way, Alberto Cairo, Truthful Art, very good book. Um, options to edit uh, meal choices subscription plans doesn't try these recipes thinks text right yeah okay easy found chat helper so there was like some sort of chat uh, thing here card overview shows allergies overview okay uh, inside recipes page shows all ingredients for certain meals that's always good disappointed no app makes ordering inconvenient okay website landing page then once logged in, uh, just for viewing, uh, finds it easy, simple. Uh, one, f okay, so apparently you, you, you tested this with a few people. Um, uh, one find, easy, simple, Molly sees it as confusing. I need some clarification on that as somebody coming in, and this is probably where, like, I'm not sure that detail would, would bubble up to the top, but it sounds like there's a, there's, um, there's a mixed, position on that uh, not convenient for selecting meals mobile web version which um, she would usually use um, so she would just send them to let them send whatever meals okay so there's something so because they don't have an app that's keeping her from really moving forward with the with the um, organization she's she's not she's not having a great experience uh only uses my account upcoming deliveries to switch delivery dates and login so it sounds like she she like they just send her food she doesn't change it a lot um mainly because it's not easy to do on her phone and that's a and that's a real issue um if if your users um and i was talking with luigi the other day, um, Luigi's company um, has a high mobile usage rate. Um, if your users are all on mobile, if that's like primarily how they find you, you've got to have a superior mobile web experience, a superior app experience. You can't just say, "Oh, we'll we'll have we'll have a great desktop." We won't really think think about the the, the mobile site. Um, the mobile sites got to be fantastic in addition to possibly having an app. Um, I, I do think that um, there are situations where you, you need an app. There are situations where you don't really need an app. You just need a really good mobile web presence. Um, you can do a lot with the mobile web. I think a lot of people reach for app too quickly. Um, but that said, um, I, um, I also... I also know that you know users users just anticipate an app in a lot of cases. Um, we can go through the rest of these, um, but it is kind of interesting. You've got the similarities between purple carrot and thistle. This is almost like a comparison. It's kind of buried. It's like you know, kind of just down here. Um, so. It is, um, it, uh, um, uh, more flexible user likes. This might be copied over from, uh, I'm seeing a lot of misspellings, but this might be copied over from Otter. Maybe Otter had a problem there. Um, but overall, um, I like the fact that you've, you've gotten this piece. Uh, although this 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 can't be from Otter, I'm just going to change this for you. Um, contradicting containers, likes some more. Okay, there. Um, with regard to um, this, I think this shows a bit of 
distillation of the of the ideas. Um, I don't necessarily need to go through Thistle to to, com to completely see that. Uh, sorry, not her strong suit. Um, but but it what I what I do like here is I like the fact that you were sitting down with a group of users, watching them really leverage or utilize um, the sites themselves. Um, you should have a better sense of what they will and won't put up with because you've sat there and watched them you you've set them what and watched them use use the sites you you kind of know like um, there were certain aspects of the of the other experience where she kept running into um, with the purple carrot she kept running into roadblocks um, and this all I'm seeing right away that um, uh, there's poor, there's bad microcopy here. Um, so, hmm. Okay. No person or chat was so user annoyed they have to email. Help button, help button was easy to find, but then when they got there, they had to email. That's, you know, that it's really surprising that you'd think that Thistle would be a little better than that. Um, it, you know, I would expect more from Thistle than from uh, Purple Carrot, because I've heard of Thistle. Um, but, you know, here you got Pro Thistle. There's an app, Con. Thistle has no real person messenger. Um, so so there are, there are trade-offs here. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix these two. More comfortable on, on laptop over phone app. So here is an here is a situation where somebody was like really really wanting, preferring that uh, computer experience over the phone. So it's good to it's good to realize that that's out there. Like it's not just you know. Um, people like Molly there are also people like Denise that want a robust desktop experience which also kind of leads you to believe that wow you know I've got to I've got to think about I've got to I can't just put all my eggs in mobile I've also got to consider desktop and in case you're wondering that's a reason why we need more designers because you can't just design like as we add screens, tablets, cars, kiosks, like as we add screens, we need more designers. There's more design happening. So like visual design, how the flows work from device to device, all of these things need consideration and that's why design is going through a boom. If we didn't have all these new screens, we wouldn't have all, all these requirements. So this is pretty good. Um, uh, for the record, um, I'm really happy to see the the updates here, um, Abby. I would like to see summaries with these as, as you move forward. I, I do think that you know some of that is here, like you, you you're distilling down. It's just where it's at is, is a little different. It's still it's still bitsy. Um, I want to take a look now for a second at your analysis and. You got a SWAT here, and the SWAT is really supposed to be on uh, what your organization can do. Um, and it says quick, visible feedback, familiar and easy to understand wording, prompt it, prominent nav to help guide user next step breadcrumbs. Like this is all. This all sounds like it's on the things that you've reviewed it's not really about what your organization can do and it's all like it's all like interface um you know when we think when we think about the the benefits that like what are the what are the strengths for fresh market well you got to go back to the stakeholder interviews like the stakeholder interview told told you uh, in the documents that came with that like they've got a great regional footprint they've got lots of nearby delis they can deliver fresh food really fast because they're in the neighborhood they're not sh being shipped from across 
the country uh, and like freezer packed boxes and things um, you know and like weaknesses too much information on page causes scrolling for user yeah that is very much a problem a problem for the competition it's not necessarily for your organization and I want to I want, just want to double down there um, uh, product market let's go through here I, I just want to look at the comp analysis checkpoint and make sure that I'm not leading you okay so um, yeah SWOT analysis on your company okay so that SWOT analysis we need to refocus it and so the known unknowns um, known unknowns is interesting to me because it's always about okay so what based on based on my study of the competition what don't I know or what like what questions do I have right now what what thing in you know and again we go back to you know um, go back to this competitive analysis doc here where we talk about the known unknowns and you get into here known unknowns is is basically this area right here so so your competitive research that you've done to this point is this dark green circle the light green circle outside that's the known unknowns and that's the questions that I should ask because I know that they're there but I don't know the answer so I've got to ask these questions and when I look at your competitive ana your competitive analysis and I look at your known unknowns higher than average grocery bill most users avoid because of cost uh, options are options for different price ranges so that that's a known known like that's some that's stuff that you know what I'm looking for is what are the questions that you have now that you've done the analysis now I mean now that you've done the research what questions do you have so you can carry those into your user interviews all right um, app apps smaller companies don't have them convenient for users to order quickly right that's a known known okay not a known unknown I need to know what questions you have now so I like this analysis uh, the SWOT analysis, it's not on your company. The known unknowns, I'm seeing I'm seeing answers, not questions. All right. Now competition, I see Thistle, Kitch Fix, and Fresh Fresh Direct. That's great. We could probably we could probably go a bit deeper on each of these because I'm almost certain that much of this actually belongs down here. Um, but as far as a com of a competitive competitor analysis, right now I'm not seeing I'm not seeing the information that I would want to see prior to jumping into user interviews, which is a problem because you've already jumped into user interviews. And my worry is you didn't carry quest clear questions that should have been right here into those user interviews. So that's something that we need to talk about today. I'm not going to necessarily jump into your user interview notes because again, this is a situation where these are in bits and I need a summary. I need you to, to like tie a bow on the top of this so that I know like what was the overall gist of your conversation with Anna and Molly and Denise and Jess and Kara. I, I feel like in Johnny, I feel like you've got, you, you did a lot of research here and that's good. Okay. My question, my, my question is what are the, what are the high level things that, that came out of this research? Now I'm gonna go through and, and read deeper into into the bits of information here because there's probably some there's probably some clear observations that we have going into this. But the big thing that that I need needed to happen here was I needed you to be asking the questions that you don't already have the answers for. Because again, you did all this competitor testing you have also in addition robust competitor research you've got a lot of stuff here there should be questions that you already know the answers to i don't necessarily need you to ask them about the higher than average grocery bill i need you to ask them questions that you don't know about all right 
So I'm hoping maybe we maybe we accidentally got in there got there, but until I read through all of these, I won't necessarily know. Um, but what I do know is it, it wasn't here in the analysis doc. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that there, and now we're gonna move over to Maddie. Maddie has got not one but two code pen uh, element exercises to to look at. We're gonna, gonna, gonna come back to active blobs in a second because I'm really more interested in the work Maddie did here with regard to um, with regard to her um, hero section and and essentially Maddie's kind of going through the process of okay how would I structure this um, how would I structure this to be utilized um, um, in a in a portfolio. Um, cause right now she, she, her, her portfolio is over in, um, her portfolio is over in, um, gosh, what is it called? Um, Squarespace, right. And this, this gives her a, a bit more control over, over how she goes about, um, build, building things out. And one thing that I would look at here is, um, div nav bar, um, when we look at semantic tags, semantic HTML tags, let's take a look at the elements that we could be using. And there's there's a number of them. Um, so header is one that you have, all right? And header is, is um, it, it's really interesting because nav is also here and it's like okay well, well which one do i do i use um you know one thing that i i like to do is if i can find my way back here not active blobs one thing i like to do is i like to use nav right there on the nav bar um and as you can see because you've applied a class of nav bar to it You know, it's just a class of navbar. So nothing here really needs to change because again, it's just the class, but you could have just as easily said, all right, nav. And I also need to change this to nav. And you'll see that all of that still works. Um, and most of it's still working mainly because nav bar is still attached to it. If I pull the class off, Everything else should change, but one thing's gonna break here and it's gonna be the hover. So if I just change this to nav, this goes back to being valid and it's gonna hover. So like that's one thing I would do. Header, header could be just like, I'm gonna have this on the nav and I'm gonna have this on the hero section that follows. Um, this is a spot where you could also come back in and say, okay, well, this is a section. It's not, it's not just a div. It's, it's a, it, you know, a, a div doesn't have any semantic value to it, but a section does. And because you, because you called, you, you basically put everything here on he, the class of hero content. This isn't a big deal. Like you could leave it as a div. You can make it a section, whatever you like. Um, Overall, though, I think that this this all works fine. There's there's nothing really wrong with it. I just kind of wanted to talk about that semantic uh, tagging. Um, when you when you call it div, when you call something div, um, it carries no value, okay. But when you say navigation, it tells screen readers and Google, and it 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 basically tells all these other things that might be pointing to your site where that imp where is the nav for this header header you know i gotta be honest with you header header is not one of my favorite favorite tools although it is semantically accurate okay um you know and and the reason why header exists is because we were doing things like this div id nav div class header div cl id footer and that's why you have a footer now that's why you have a header that's why you have a nav that's why you have sections so, um, you know, the, and people will, will bag on me for even beginning to look at, um, 
beginning to look at W3 schools, but Mozilla's got great information on this too. Um, there are some interesting things here. You can have several header elements in one HTML document. However, header cannot be placed within the footer, um, address, or another header. So, you know, it's interesting the way they sh show it here. If you had an article, the header could be used for the headline and the, the mission like label, and then that's the end of the header. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like when you were thinking about header, and I've seen people use it th exactly the same way as, as you have. Whoops. Um, where, did, where, did, where did everything go? Um, you were thinking about header as like the top of the page. That makes perfect sense. What they're saying is header could just as easily be this section. Like this section could be header. I don't necessarily agree with that. I would probably make that the section. Um, th just as you have it, but but again, you you had it as divs. I've replaced divs with nav and section. Um, I've seen header used the way you've used it, but you know, I've also seen it used in other ways. Um, the the bottom line is we've like flipped a lot of the stuff around, and nothing has changed here visually. The only thing that's changed is semantically what the site or what this is saying to other things that are pointing at it. Again, screen readers, um, uh, search engines, things like that. So, but stylistically, I like it. It looks nice. It, it's, um, it is, it is fine. There's nothing, nothing there, you know, you made, you made a lot of spacing tweaks. Um, I am curious. I'm going to look at your CSS. Yeah. So let's turn off the, uh, reset for a second. I want to see what happens. Uh, yeah, you can see what happens when the reset goes away. This is particularly important um, because it, you know, having a reset in there allows you to uh, consistently design without worrying about, oh, is something going to show up or go away or have weird spacing? Um, let's look at this blob thing. So you've got this blob over here. And one of the things that I like to, you know, this is just a code pen thing that you brought in. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is I like to, to look at like, okay, so what are the things that this blob is, you know, it, you know, there's a class of blob and the blob, by the way, is just this SVG shape. This, this is, there's nothing special happening here. The SVG is just kind of moving around the page. Um, when we, when we look at the blog blob though, in CSS, there is an absolute position on the blob. And then the blob moves and they, you know, it moves to different positions on the page. Um, one thing that I like to see here is I like to check out like this transform origin um, and the animation. If I move this animation to one second, it's going to like begin to freaking out around the page. Woo, right? And if you put it on 20 seconds, it's going to start moving so slowly across the page. Um, this is one of those things where I think it's really important to realize how you can come in and begin to modify things that you find online. And without exploration, like I've never seen this blob class before. I, I don't know what this is, but I know that animation has short, you know, this is shorthand where move, animation what? Well, animation move. Why is move there? Well, because the keyframe is set to move and that's why, you know, if this, if I change this to Apple, I'm pretty sure it won't move anymore. Yeah, just whoop, sit still, no movement, it just broke, right? But if I change this to Apple, uh, suddenly, movement again. Why? Why is the keyword Apple important? No, the, the, the point is the keyword isn't important. Uh, why the, the keyword was set to move? Well, that's what it's doing. It's moving. So it makes sense to use the keyword move, right? And we want to use things that make sense. Um, but after move, you've got like the duration, 20 seconds. It's going to ease in and ease out. It could be also be linear. It could be ease in. It could be ease out. This is ease in out. Um, and then it's infinite, which means it goes over and over and over again. Um, I'm going to change this back to to five, mainly because I just want to see it move around. And 
let's look at Transform Origin. Like right now, Transform Origin is 50%, 50%. Let's cha change this to 5%. And this should, if it's XY, it's now, it's now not moving nearly as far across. It's just moving over a little bit and coming back, which means if I change this to 100, this may just go off the screen. And there it goes. And then it's gonna roll on back and then go up. So if I change this to 100, 100, it's gonna go off the screen, it's gonna go down, we might not even see it. Hmm, that's interesting because it didn't go as far down as I would have anticipated. Um, let's change that back to 50, 50. So there it stays on screen, it goes down it just below blob. I just wanna see if it will go down any further than that. So, yeah, it goes way down. Interesting. It's almost like the, it, it's almost as if um, it's migrating off the page initially. And what I, what I think is really interesting is a lot of that has to do with the, the percentages that are set up here on the keyframe move. If I remove, it's making one, two, three, four, five, six stops. So it's making six stops to, to get back around and it's coming right back around to the same spot where it ends at. Um, let's try to break this. So if we said 100 instead, at 100%, at it should end up somewhere different than where it starts and that's gonna break the infinite loop. It's got, kinda got a little hiccup there. Um, let's change it to 1,000. So here it goes over, it's gonna come down. Okay, so it, w what's happening there is it's, it's starting at a radically different spot and now it no longer smoothly loops because we've changed, we've changed where it's at and that's the thing about an infinite loop. It has to end exactly where it begins for it to remain a smooth infinite loop. But that doesn't mean that you can't change something in the in the mix right here and, and what's so funny is it starts and then this rotate it rotates 160 degrees and then it rotates again 160 degrees and then it's negative 20 and then it's negative 20. if you change one of these it's gonna it's gonna break on you because it's it's not gonna know quite how to how to handle that move see did you see what happened here right as it gets to the lower right it has to do this quick spin because it's it's it goes from 160 then quickly to 300, and then it, it has to move back to, to another position. So if, if we wanted that to, if we wanted this to actually just happen, we would need to change both of them to three, six, 300. And now it's spinning more as it gets there. So this is just really cool stuff that Maddie has, has brought in here. I just wanted to take a second to go through it because I want it to spend some time exploring in code with you um, because you can you can grab any code online from somewhere but it's it's in the exploration I don't want you to just like slap it in and just go okay it works I want you to understand why it's working I want you to go through and and work with the values um, understand what's happening there with it rather than just you know coming in and saying oh well i've got it i got it to do a thing and it's there now i don't understand why it does it and the reason why it, I, I just don't think there's any value to you to you in just bringing it in like one of the things that's happening here is scale like if we change this to sc scale four it's going to get real big right You know, we hadn't done anything with scale. Did I know that was gonna happen? Well, I could assume because it has a wor the word scale, I could assume that it, you know, 0 .0, uh, 0.8 going up to 1.3, 1, 1, 1 that sounds like it goes up by like 50%. Um, so in my head, because I see that, that, that um, property value of scale, I'm going to guess that's going to, going to happen similarly to like when I see rotate, you know, if I change this 
20 degrees or 160 degrees, I can, should be able to anticipate what's going to happen. The key is going in there, messing with the code and seeing if what you anticipate happening does in fact happen, okay? And then you could, you know, go in there and, you know, you could look up rotate, you know, rotate property CSS, rotate property CSS. And hey, looky there, rotate. And now you can get into the syntax of what rotate can actually do. And it tells you, oh, it takes all of these different values. And here's an example. And, you know, here's, here's, uh, you know, really simple, you know, um, when a class of rotate it comes in here, we show this is you know now rotated 45 degrees from its original position, and then you can add this in with the transformation, and you can get, begin to move this thing around. the The difference here, when we look back at what Maddie brought us, is that it's this keyframe that is telling it, okay go here, then go here, then go here, then go here, and do it at this speed. Make all of these moves within five seconds, all right? That's why when you say make all those moves within one second, it just like bounces around the whole screen, right? And if you say make all those moves in 100 seconds, well, it's gonna take a minute, okay? And if you're going for that lava lamp feel, it's a very great way to do it. All right. So, Maddie, thanks for bringing that up. Um, we're going to jump over here to Eddie now. And Eddie is going to close us out today. Um, he's working through his sketches. And as you can see, Eddie has been busy. Um, so, when we, do, when we do our interface sketches, what we're really doing is studying existing patterns. And... The study of existing patterns is really important, particularly if you're like Eddie and you're new to design and you've never really sat down and stopped and looked and said, oh, wow, instead of just using a site, I'm gonna study it. So this is OpenTable. And obviously when you go to OpenTable um, and you go to book, book a, um, a, a, an anything, um, you get a select a date time dropdown, okay? And then there's, you know, he's also paid attention to, you know, there's these other, um, there's these other elements on the screen. It's not, he's not just focused on the drop down. Um, from that drop down, he's gotten a list of restaurant. Here's a restaurant photo. Here's details. This is filtering over here, um, and that's one one thing I would make sure to to note, Eddie, is I would make sure to note like. Hey, what are these other areas doing? Um, I, I, I totally respect the the um, work that you've done here. Um, otherwise, um, but but that filter piece is pretty important. Um, here we've got indoor button, outdoor button. So there's a popover if you select a restaurant. Do you want this to be inside or outside? That's really important these days. Um, indoor outdoor probably isn't well. It, it isn't always an option. Uh, but during a pandemic, it like makes logical sense because a lot of restaurants can't have indoor seating. Um, so if you wanted indoor seating, uh, you might not be able to get a reservation. Um, restaurant time and details. So this is, I, I've selected something um, here. I put in my information here and then I can confirm down there. Um, that's a pretty good flow, Eddie. Um, that's, that's what we're looking for. So aside from, you know, making sure that you realize what all the pieces are doing, you know, I think you've done a good job there. Let's take a look at a couple more of these. Um, this is add to cart. So this is, um, this looks like it might be Amazon. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, flow page, amazon.com. So um, you've got, you know, your homepage, you've clicked on something. This has got you to a product detail. We all, we all know the buy now or add to cart. Um, so you've got your cart. It's like a drop down. Uh, you proceed to checkout. Uh, you probably had to sign in at that point. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so you're, you're signed in, signing in. You can place the order. Um, there's some information here. Um, the information, the interesting thing here, Eddie, is that I'd be very interested in knowing what these general areas are because it says one two three it sounds like steps but i think that that is 
relate it to like payment information and and address and things like that. So I'd, I'd be making notes of this information in a little more detail um, and then you get a confirmation. So um, overall, I, it's pretty good, but I'd still, I still would like you to have just a tad more detail because this is meant to be like study notes for you for later. All right, um, this has got to be um, uh, Franken, yeah. Yeah, this is Franken Oak. Um, so this is FrankenOak.com. You got this drop down. Um, you get the you get like a mega menu that comes comes down. Um, there's links inside of here, and then you know, and you know, here's the accessory. So this is navigate the men's accessories from nav bar. Um, again, this is filtering over here. I, I, I think that some of that information is is pretty important to know um, because again you're not just studying like oh how do I go through this flow but what's on this page um, this is signing into figma and figma.com I can sign up it's got a big image um, so this is what the login screen is like Google sign in or email password um, you can name what you do, man, uh, mailing list, sign up, and then verify, and then you know it walks you into the main menu. So here's your email. Um, verify. Oh, okay. So wait, your email. Verify. Progress bar. Email verified, and then you go in. Okay, that's that's the full flow. Um, and it's important to realize that these things are not just the interface of the company itself. It's also like what happens when you try to, um, I was working with Luigi yesterday and we were like, you know, when somebody files a complaint, what happens? So we just test the flow. Like what are they gonna do? Get mad at us for testing, you know, the complaint flow. And we got a, we got a response back and it was like, okay, well, here's what, ha what happens. If you have a question of like, I don't know what happens after this point, you have to you have to commit to going through it and a lot of times like when i'm testing a site um i might order something really small like I, i've tested sites before ordered something and then canceled the order just because i wanted to i want to go through the flow now sometimes you know i want the socks that i ordered and i just let it let it come on through but um oftentimes i'll, I'll say well you know I, I need to cancel that um order but at least i've now seen what happens after we can complete the cycle all right um, finally, Eddie, you've got your survey results here and you got 62, which is really good. Um, uh, one of the things that I do when I'm looking at, at these is, um, I, I rarely, if ever look at the individual answers or, or I rarely ever look at the summary. The summary is good. Um, but I pay more attention to the spreadsheet and you can access the spreadsheet right here. Um, oftentimes it'll ask you, Hey, do you want to create a new spreadsheet? We just create a new a new spreadsheet out of this. Um, I'm gonna sort this um, information. It says it's transferring data. I'm gonna close that one. Come over here. I'm gonna sort this uh, A to Z. So that should put like none of the above. Parent. Um, and what I typically will do in a case like this is I'll begin to color code it so that I can see, you know, who who are my different buckets of people. So those are parents. These are all students. Um, and then these are all teachers. All right. And, and that helps you as you're going across. Um, so as I'm going across, if, I, if I'm wondering if I'm in a te am I looking at a teacher or a student or whatever? Now I've got, now I've got people I can, I can begin to, to study with. Also important is, you know, I could also come through here and, and sort A to Z and just get, okay, so here are the people that said I can contact them, all right? So I may actually come through and say, okay, well, these people, I'm going to lift out and say, these are my, these are my go-tos, okay? So really quickly, what I've done is I've taken your entire, entire spreadsheet and I've split it a couple of ways. One, parent, teacher, student. 
but then two, um, you know, and, and I could have done this a different way, and, and I might I might take this back. What I might look at is instead of doing parent, teacher, student like this, I might just take these and color them and say, okay, these are the greens. So then when I go back, if I, if I resort it the other way and I say, okay, short, I, I've still got parents, students, and teachers identified. So you've got four teachers you can reach out to. You've got, you know, six or seven students, eight students, three parents, but those are, those are the ones that are really important to you. Um, and that, and that's why I was splitting it this way to begin with, because I want to sort those. I want to get those at the top and those are the people. And from here, um, you know, you can go through and, you know, you can look at their answers and begin to, to you know, you can also, frankly, just, you, you could copy these, um, you know, or you could, you could, you know, duplicate, you know, duplicate. So here's your form responses. Here's the copy of form responses. I'm just going to ditch everything down below. Delete rows 18 through 63. All right. So here's your, here's your rider dies. Um, let's go A to Z and yeah, I'll probably just go back to, to what I had before because now, now I can, I can use this to resort a different way and say, okay, well, now that I know these are all people I can talk to anyway, who's got the answers that matter most to me? So like, you know, are your children able to remain safe, safely home by themselves? No and no and yes. All right. So there's, you know, and then here, what would you prefer? I would prefer hybrid, hybrid, home, virtual learning. Uh, how concerned are you um, about the pandemic's impact? Very concerned, a bit concerned. So it's like, which one of these, which one of these parents do you want to reach out to first? Um, same thing with students, you know, um, how peaceful is the environment at home? Somewhat peaceful, very peaceful. Um, uh, important, extremely important, not important. Like I, I'd be, you know, how important is face-to-face -face communication with you? Um, I think, I think talking to person, somebody who said ex extremely important and then talking to somebody who said it's not important at all. I think those are two very interesting people to talk to. All right. So there's, there's ways that you can begin slicing this information. Um, but, but the first, the first cut of this is just like, okay, separate out who you have, copy over the people that said that you can talk to them, put them in their own sheet, right? So that you're not having, because you got, you've got 60 responses. That's great, okay? But I really want to now focus on the responses that said you can talk to me because those are the responses, those are the ones that I need to, I need to understand them the best. Keep in mind, I still have the overall summary of data over here. I haven't gotten rid of that at all but I wanna make sure I'm focusing my attention in the right spots, all right? Okay, folks, that is gonna do it for a lengthy version of the feedback loop today. Um, thank you, Abby, thank you, Maddie, thank you, uh, Eddie, for submitting work today. Um, I'm gonna to be uh, meeting with many of you today, some of you, I will see you later in the week, but if you got value out of this, please hit that like button, Hit consider subscribing to the channel. And otherwise, I hope to see you all right back here tomorrow for the feedback loop. Take care.